So I just want to welcome everybody to the Amherst Community Chat for Thursday, December 10th. Today we have du Superintendent of uh, Public Works, Guilford Mooring, joining us, um, and your town manager, Paul Balkeman, myself, Brianna Sunrid. Thank you all for tuning in today. So before we get to Q&A, and I'll just remind um, everyone you can use the Q&A function or raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, I'll give Paul a chance to report out and then Guilford a chance to introduce himself. Thanks, Brianna. So yeah, the big news for us is that the university announced that they were going to be providing asymptomatic testing to the general public uh, at um, at the Mullen Center, which is, I mean, that happened last week, but it's, it's a pretty important development for us. Um, they have been doing asymptomatic testing of all university students and the affiliates and for so many of our first responders, including uh, some DPW, inspection services, uh, police and fire. Um, but this is for the general population. It's free. It's by appointment only. And uh, they have a website set up that you can go in, schedule the appointment. It literally takes two or three minutes. I've done it. Brianna's done it. Um, you're allowed to get tested once a week. Um, it's, it's an important tool in the fight against the COVID virus. And it's about time that we got one set up in Hampshire County. It's been needed, uh, but comes at a critical time as there's a lot of people who are traveling. And it just gives you peace of mind. Um, now the likelihood is that um, this may surface asymptomatic people who have COVID that didn't know they have it, but that's an important thing to find out, and so that's why it's why it's important. I think they can they have um, three thousand slots, and at this point, about a third of them have been filled for next week. So I think there's plenty of opportunity for people to go in and get tested and schedule a time. And this is available. Um, you know, until mid-March, I think. It's, it's beyond various schedules. You have to go on the website. They'll be closed, at, you know, during the um, the last two weeks of uh, December. They have a modified schedule because of the holidays. Um, and then when students come back in February, they will reduce the community side and expand the student side, uh, but it will still be available to the community side. So that's the really big news for the town. I think that's really good news too. And you can find that link um, obviously directly at UMass pages, but if you're uh, more familiar with our homepage, it's under the news section. It's also at our amherstcovid19.org, our standalone page for community COVID-19 information. Okay, so I wanna welcome Guilford. Guilford, if you wanted to um, introduce yourself and give a little report out about what's happening in your department. Hi, I'm Guilford Mooring, uh, Superintendent of Public Works. It's been a very interesting season this year, the construction season. Um, we're, we're wrapping up now. We've uh, done a few things we didn't plan on doing, like a water line on the West Pomeroy Lane, uh, but we got the paving done and we're doing a few other little odds and ends and wrapping those up. We are getting ready for the winter and transitioning over to winter operations at this time. And um, that's about where we are. We've, we've had a little bit some small issues with COVID as far as employees go, but we haven't had any large issues so far with COVID. So just to let you know how we're holding up. And we do come to work. We're here every day we're scheduled. We're a um, seven day a week operation and um, we got 24 hour standby as well. So we're still operating the same way we were before the pandemic started, just so you know. When you say we, you're still, you're talking about water, sewer, highway, parks and grounds, a, a, a wide range of services, Any, pretty much anything outside is yes. under you. Transfer station is open, it's mm -hmm. normal hours. Um, vehicle maintenance is going on, street lights are being repaired, all those things are going on. Mm -hmm. Great, and I'm gonna just take a quick chance to remind the, the folks in the room, feel free to raise your hand, star nine from a phone or use the Q&A button to pop your questions in uh, live. We've got some um, that were pre-submitted, so I'm going to start with those, but I encourage you to chime in at any point. Um, so one of the questions that, that came up is um, in relation to some of the work that was done downtown to, um, for shared streets. And this question is, are you going to be restriping the downtown streets back to normal now that the barriers have been removed? We're actually not gonna restripe it to where it was before the barriers are put out. We are gonna go in probably, it's supposed to be a warm day tomorrow, or if they're not out there today, one of these two days are the warmest days of the week. We're gonna be repaying the black lines, the blackout, the old lines. 
um, and make sure they're gone and then the new lines will stay. We have to put the barriers back out in the spring. So painting and not painting, the, the smallest amount of painting we do is the best for the lines that the show through. So that's what we're hoping to do. So, so the intention is that all those barriers that were there, we're, we're anticipating that COVID is not going to be gone by April, May. So we're going to be putting those barriers back up to help the restaurants come out from hibernation and be able to be active again. So that's the purpose in that. We have a question here that came in from one of our elected officials. Uh, what is the town doing for wastewater testing and how are we monitoring that? So the, what we're doing right now is what a lot of communities are doing is we just have one testing site at the wastewater treatment plant and we're sampling the wastewater as it comes in and they're keeping track of the, the flow and the, you know, the rate of infections and the rate of the virus that comes through the system. We do have three different channels that come into the wastewater plant. So we do, we can kind of break it down as this is coming from North Amherst, this is coming from South Amherst, this is coming from UMass, and then we can put it all together as well. But they are, they are testing the influent coming into the plant and they are looking for COVID virus. It is there. Um, it's um, been pretty, pretty constant since we started doing this. And this is in conjunction with the university, right? Yes, and the university is actually doing it as a way to test some newer protocols on how to test your wastewater for COVID more than to track the fact that it's there or not there. All right, it's pretty interesting. Do they share any of that information or numbers out or is that more of an in-house operation? Um, every once in a while they get some updates on the numbers, but it's mostly an in-house operation. Got it. Um, okay, I, I want to take a moment because your assistant superintendent, Amy, um, has asked me to kind of spread the word about this, and maybe I can have you um, talk a little bit about the increase, the uptick in um, fat oils and, and grease and wipes and, you know, masks, single-use masks and gloves showing up in the, the sewer system. Flushable wipes. What's wrong with flushable wipes? <laughs> there is no such thing as a flushable wipe. Um, yes, we're seeing an uptick. Um, <clears throat> it's not really an increase above normal, but it's an increase in the residential areas because more people are staying home. Um, we actually have a decrease in greases and oils in some part of town because those places are closed down, mostly around the universities and the colleges. <clears throat> but we're seeing more people at home who are actually pouring grease down the drain, which you should never pour grease down your drain. They're um, <clears throat> cleaning with flushable wipes and uh, depositing them in their toilet and flushing them. Those are not very good at all. They actually combine with the greases and will make blockages in your pipes. We've had about four backups in the last week, um, sewage backups in the last week from <clears throat> grease clogs and wipes and mixed together. So it is a concern um, when the pipes do back up, they back up into the lowest part of the sewer. Um, many times that's somebody's basement. So it's very important not to flush things down the toilet that don't go down the toilet, which is very important. So pay attention to what you're doing and what your kids are doing with their the wipes and stuff like that and the grease. I saw some communities um, were circulating a pledge to, to share with their community members. So maybe that's something we'll, we'll talk <laughs> you about. Won't, you won't flush flushable wipes. That's great. Yeah. And other, and other things mm -hmm. that don't belong there. Actually, um, you, you should get the, you should get the YouTube videos from uh, England when they do the do the cleaning in their sewer lines. Those are the hugest globs of grease you'll ever see. But it's yeah. But so, but what happens is these things. What you say is they congeal and then they block the sewer line, and then the next time you know somebody's house gets backed up into their basement and it's really nasty. So and expensive. Yes. yes. Um, all right. Well, that was my my little plug for that. We'll be putting more information <laughs> about that um, out in the next couple of days as well. So if you have any questions about what that mm -hmm. means just let us know. Mm -hmm. um, so one general thing that we wanted to ask, because it's kind of, you know, I know we're looking at some warm days coming up, but um, are we ready for winter? And can you talk a little bit about getting prepared for the inevitable uh, snow? <clears throat> so we are we're ready for the winter season. Our equipment's ready to go. Uh, one thing we've been refining is how we're going to staff for the storms. 
Uh, normally we have a crew and they just work through the whole winter, but we're trying to make sure we bring in more people, train more people. <clears throat> we don't know, I mean, one of the things we do know is as winters go along, the employees get worn down and worn out and tired and they get more prone to sicknesses as the season goes on. So we're trying to put more people into the system to plow so that they can uh, stay a little more resilient and a little healthier. Um, so we're still trying to figure out how to do that and get it so it's balanced, but you'll see different people plowing and sanding and treating um, than you normally do because we're trying to rotate around a bit. Um, we do <clears throat> remind you that if you have a sidewalk in front of your house, sidewalks are the responsibility of the, of the property owner to clear. Um, please shovel your sidewalk, um, <clears throat> keep your sidewalk clear of salt, of salt I mean, uh, ice and build up like that. Um, you can get sand at the DPW, um, but you can, um, it's your responsibility as a property owner to keep the sidewalk clear. We do have a route where we pass once, but we only go down that route once and it's just to help you out. Um, if we're not helping you out and you want us to stop doing it, please let us know. We'll stop going down your sidewalk if you look, prefer to clean it yourself. We do have people who do that and ask. Um, with the winter coming as well, fire hydrants. The fire department and the DPW also go out and clear fire hydrants, but it, if it starts snowing, <clears throat> if you have a fire hydrant in your, in your yard, it's always nice and it's safe. It's extra protection for you and your neighbors to clear that fire hydrant and make sure it's accessible to the fire crews if they have to come in. And then that's basically it. Just remember, ho hopefully traffic drops down and we're not supposed to be out past 9.30 now. So um, traffic should be calmer during the busiest times of snowstorms. But remember to always slow down. Don't tailgate the, the plow trucks. Don't try to pass the plow trucks. And don't try to think the plow truck can stop. The, the plow truck, when he's out plowing, is now probably two to three times heavier than it's been in normal operations. And it's going to take it three to four times, maybe five times longer distance to stop. So if you're used to zipping around a big truck and now you're able to stop quickly, and he's loaded with salt and sand material and he's got a plow on the front of the truck, he's a lot heavier and he's going to take longer to stop. So please respect the treatment trucks and the plows and stay back away from them if you can. Don't get too close. So it sounds like we need a hydrant adoption program. Um, I'll work on those certificates if anybody wants to adopt their, their local hydrant and keep it clear. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention or ask about Guilford is parking ban. I mean, we're, we're still going to be utilizing that and um, explaining to people how they can find out if there's a parking ban, but I wanted to encourage anybody who's not yet signed up for our alerts, um, you can do so at amherstma.gov um, prepare. You can sign up in your native language or um, decide how you wanna get those alerts to your cell, to your email. Uh, you could also simply text join parking to 30890 and you'll be automatically added to that alert system um, from the device that you are using. All right, quick call to the- uh, Let's talk about the alert system and how that works. Like DPW makes the call when they when they feel like there's gonna be a significant snowstorm and there should not be parking on the streets, right, Guilford? Yes, anytime you see a forecast for snow where the lowest amount of snow is two to three inches, you can expect a parking ban to be placed, in, placed on the town. If it's only like gonna be two or three inches, you probably may not see it, but if it's two or three, if it's two inches and it's going to be up to six inches, you're going to probably get, we're going to probably call a parking ban. We try to call the parking ban before noon. So um, we'll try to have it in that window right there in the morning. So you have time, usually before the storm gets going good to um, get your car situated and off the roads and put someplace safe. And, and beyond the texting or the website, we also have the blue lights at major intersections that go flashing. And that's when you know there's a winter parking ban in effect. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on our, on our website. We, we put it on our social media. We um, have a banner ac it's across all the pages of our websites, the flashing lights, the, the press gets it. So hopefully you're in, in tune to uh, one of those methods when, when that happens. And we also do a parking ban after big storms. If we have a big mm -hmm. storm and we have to come up and clean the downtown area and pick snow, 
We'll do an isolated parking ban for the downtown area just to keep, get cars off the road so we can clear snow off the sidewalks and the shoulders of the downtown business area. So you could see the flashing lights flashing, but there wasn't a prediction of snow and it's after a storm has already happened and you're thinking, oh, they just forgot to turn them off. Well, no, we didn't forget to turn them off. We're coming into work that night and we've cleaned snow up between 11 o'clock and seven o'clock in the morning. So if you're out downtown and you leave your car on the main streets downtown, we'll tow your car if the, par if the blue lights are on. All right, so I have um, another comment that was submitted from a community member um, over on Shearman Lane. And um, she wrote in urging action on the East Pleasant sidewalk, East existing condition survey. Um, she couldn't make the meeting today, but she wanted to make sure her comment got read. Um, so she lives on Shearman Lane and appreciates greater access to town via walking for um, herself and her children. Sidewalks along East Pleasant could not only improve our town aesthetically, but would allow for better community health and improved access to downtown businesses, which is sorely needed. So any comments on, um, on that? The project isn't going on. We do need to get the survey done and we're working on getting a surveyor hired. We have actually several projects for surveyors right now. Um, and there will be an ad going out shortly for, for surveying. Um, we do expect to have that surveyed shortly before in, sometime in the spring. The project we're working on for sidewalks right now is the North Pleasant Street sidewalks, which was something that's been in the works for many, many years. And we'll start seeing work next year on repairing and widening sidewalks in, along North Pleasant Street. Great, thank you. So um, this is a, a topical one. So with, with so many sports not being played currently, does, does that mean our fields have received, received a much needed rest? I know that was a big, um, a big conversation last year. They have received a much needed rest. Um, there has been a few exceptions. Um, with the university being closed, uh, they have not allowed uh, students to use the facilities at the university. So they've used our facilities. Um, if, you, uh, if you're a college student and you want to go play football or something on the town fields, please don't do it. Go to UMass, use their fields, tear up their field, not our field in the mud, snow season. Um, you paid tuition to them, not to the town of Amherst. Um, <laughs> but on the general, mostly all the fields are doing much better right now. Speaking of uh, recreation outside, so uh, this person ma makes mention that they saw a photo of Puffer's Pond being cleared for ice skating in the past. Does that still happen or will we have some sort of skating rinks, outdoor skating rinks in town this winter? Um, Puffer's Pond, I don't think has been cleared for ice skating in a long time as a town thing. There are some people who will go out there and clear it off and skate themselves. Um, but I don't think the town has actually sanctioned that and contributed to it in a long time. Uh, we have been talking about putting up an ice rink in town somewhere. The only issue we're having in the last few years about doing ice rinks in town is the weather's not cooperating. We don't get a hard freeze. It doesn't stay frozen. Um, there's a lot of freezing and thawing and the ice comes and goes and it causes a bit of an issue for keeping it that way. So it's up to Mother Nature. If Mother Nature is going to be nice to us, we might be able to do something, but it's up to, it's up to the weather. And where would that be? What, if, you, if, you, if, you, if the weather cooperated, would you have an idea of where that might go? I'm not sure. Um, we did it, we've done it at Kendrick Park. We've done it on the South Common. We've done it at, um, at the community field. I'm not sure where we'd want to do it this year, but I'm sure if people kind of have an idea of where they want it, just throw it out there and let us hear and we'll probably look around. So these are rinks that you build and then fill with water and then it freezes, hopefully freezes, sometimes it doesn't. Do they get much use, Guilford? They get, um, we, I mean, we don't stay out there all the time to see how much use is going on, but they mm -hmm. do get some use. Good, okay. Yeah, I think there's a concern about people not having, you know, kids in the house all the time doing school and not being out and looking for different ways for people to engage um, for being outside. And that's why I think we've seen so much use of our parks and um, our trails and things like that, much heavier use than we've seen in the past, um, which is a good thing, you know. 
And that, I mean, that was a question that we had here too, just that uptick in um, use of our, of our trails. Is that um, just merely an observation or is there any way to tell, is there any wear, extra wear and tear on some of these things or uh, trash or any, any issues that you see coming out of that increased usage? What we see is the trash issue. Um, trash has been, trash has been a big issue. Trash issue, big issue. Yeah, trash has been on the increase this year. Um, more and more people are using the facilities. More and more people are bringing trash, and they're leaving it behind. Um, you mean their household it. trash? No, just trash. Trash in general. They have parties. They have cookouts. They they bring something, a game to play. They'll leave the box. The game came in. There's just leaving stuff behind when they bring come there, thinking that we'll we'll empty the trash can and we'll take it all away for them. Mm. Um, we've had people have birthday parties and leave uh, leave the cake that wasn't eaten and leave the leftover food sitting on a picnic table, thinking someone someone will like this cake and eat it because it's just sitting here, um, and we have to clean it up. Uh, there has been a very the, the park usage is up, but if you come use the park, bring your trash or bring your stuff in the trash, pack it out. Don't leave it in the trash cans. If you have a lot, take it with you, go back home and dispose of it that way. The parks are not meant to be the, the trash receptacles for, for everyone. So keep some extra grocery bags, plastic bags in your car and pack out your trash if you're adventuring outdoors, I think. Um, that's what we try to do anyway. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm just going to give another call to the folks in the room that if, if you do have a question or a comment, it doesn't have to be related to public works, we welcome you to come in and do so uh, by raising your hand in Zoom or by um, putting your thought or comment question in the Q&A function within Zoom. So please do that um, before we wrap in a, a, little, a little bit. I do have some more questions here. Um, this one, it seems so far away, but um, it's, it seems like every summer there is a drought but not in Amherst. Why is that? Did we did we have lots of water this summer compared to other um, communities? Uh, there's two things that go on when people say drought. One thing that goes on is a what we call a regulatory drought, where communities around us, like Hadley, has a water permit for their system. Like we have a water permit, but in their water permit, they have a little clause that says if precipitation and water flow in a certain place is at this level, you must declare a drought. And that's a, what we call a regulatory drought. The regulators have said that you should be using less water at this time. It doesn't really, it sometimes doesn't really apply to the community very well because the place where you measure the water flow or you measure the rainfall may not even be in the community. It may be three or four communities east, west, north, and south of you. So it's not an accurate indication of what's going on in your community. Amherst, our permit right now doesn't require us to do anything for when the state declares a drought. We're required only to monitor the situation and look at the resources we have in town. Um, our water portfolio, we call it now. Um, we have the wells in the south end of town. We have the Atkins Reservoir. Uh, the Centennial Reservoir system is actually offline right now. And we look at our, our resources we have and see where we are and how much water we have. And based on those two information pieces of information, we'll say whether we need to conserve water or not. So last year, we got close, but we actually had plenty of water to use because we didn't have a lot of students here and we didn't need to put any water restrictions in place. And we have a lot of water now because it's been raining so much. I just need more customers to sell it to. Um, but it, it depends on what you're looking at for drought and what's going on as to what really is the drought and why we may not declare a drought or water restrictions and in other communities around us may require water restrictions. That's helpful to know because you always think yeah. that it's, you think that it's going to be all oh, the whole area, but it depends on your permit from the state, what it says, what, what requires the drought. Um, yes. And then we make an assessment just in terms of watching water flow and what the usage is and, um, you know, and, and then having the university closed and not and students not taking two showers a day has lessened the, the need for water. Um, so interesting. I have another question here. So 
we we saw the state of the town address that Amherst got received an impressive amount of grants in 2020, and many of those came from Public Works. Is there a particular project or grant that you guys are most proud of or excited to to work on? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't think we ever looked at it that way. Um, they're all, all the grants we kind of apply for have a purpose and have a need and we like them and we enjoy them all. Um, some of the smaller ones are actually the ones we enjoy the most getting and doing. Um, we actually, um, we actually have applied for a few more that if we get those are kind of really kind of, uh, funky techno nerdy geeky things, which will really be exciting to do. Um, <laughs> but they're small amount grants. But still, a, still a, a big impact, in some in some respects, I would imagine. Well, they they all help, and especially the smaller ones actually are usually something that do with technology and how to change processes, and those are those are they have a small impact when you do them, but they have a, a larger impact over the operating life of what you're doing. Like um, at the wastewater plants, we've had a few few grants that are very small, but they saved us tens of thousands of dollars a year in operating costs. And those have been good grants. Yeah, it's, it, it, we can't do that now, but I always, I think we had to do like a video tour of the wastewater treatment plant. It's just a remarkable facility. There's a full science lab in there that where they test things or, you know, there's, there's technology people there who are analyzing the, the, the effluent that's going out and coming in. Uh, it's a real, very technical uh, location and uh, it's pretty impressive. I'll sign up for that tour. <laughs> so we are coming up on our half hour. I wanted to give Guilford a chance to uh, leave everybody with something that he didn't get asked or we didn't talk about yet. Is there anything that you didn't get a chance to say? Um, we, we've talked about greases and oils and fats, um, talked about the drought, um, snow plowing. Um, no, the, the, the one thing to think about is, you know, your, your public works department is here. It is working. If you have a question and have a concern, um, you can call. We will take care of it. Um, some things take longer than other things. Um, some, sometimes a street light, if a street light's out, it's a changing a bulb or changing the photo cell. Sometimes we have to get the utility company, uh, Western, or uh, uh, ever uh, source. Wrong, ever source. <laughs> You're, you're I've been here showing your long. age. <laughs> we have to get Eversource involved, and that can be a little more uh, challenging to get Eversource involved. Um, so we're here doing things, and just reach out to us. There's C-Click Fix, which is online. You can put in a concern on C-Click Fix. You can email us. You can call the, the main number, and um, just call the main number, 259-3050, push zero. Um, you can talk to a person during regular hours if you push zero. Um, if you get sent to the voicemail, just leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you. Um, but we're here. We're doing things and carrying on the way we normally do. Great. Thank you. And as I was saying um, last call, I, we got a question and a comment come in from one of our attendees. Uh, with the new MassWorks grant, is Pomeroy Lane getting repaved or is redesigning the intersection the only work we got money for? She, um, the, also a comment here that they appreciate that leaf bags were picked up this fall twice instead of once. So thank you for your work. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, the Mass Works grants, we're going to look at what we, um, we have to decide what type of intersection improvements to do. And then based on what we have and how much money there will be, we'll extend how much of that section of, um, of the roadways get paved. Uh, West Pomeroy, a section of West Pomeroy will be paved, repaved next year because we did the water line work on it this fall. Um, we kind of, it's a little torn up now. The water line's in good shape. Uh, the pavement needs a little work. We'll probably repave that next year anyhow. Yeah, that MassWorks grant's really exciting. It's a big, it's a big grant, and so congratulations on getting that, Guilford. Um, and but you know, you, it sounds like a big number, but we know with these construction projects, it doesn't go very far. So no, it doesn't. And the, I mean, it was everybody worked on that grant. I mean, planning worked on it, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's how we got it all together. So it's, yeah, um, it's not it's just a team effort. Yeah. All right. Well, we are we are at our time. Uh, Paul, do you have any? parting statement no i think we're good okay all right we're doing another one next week right 
We are. And tomorrow we are having, um, I want to put a plug in for tomorrow. We will have a virtual cup of Joe tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, it's on our community calendar and on our social media channels. If you would like the link, uh, we'll, we'll have special guests from the Amherst uh, Area Chamber, okay. Amherst Bid, and the Mill District um, to talk about resilient and creative business, local business in Amherst. So tune in. Great. All right. Next, thank you so much, Guilford. Next, next Thursday. Yes, next Thursday we have um, another community chat with members of our um, internal working group, um, town employees working towards um, equity. It's our core equity team, so um, that should be interesting and exciting as well. Mm -hmm. So tune yeah. in. Cool. All right. Thank, thank you. you all. Take care. Bye. Have a great day.